Right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are well and excited for this session. I'm just going to check that I can be heard. I'm just going to get a thumbs up from one of my colleagues. Bear with me. Hopefully, I can be heard. It's always a bit of a concern with these live lessons, whether it's streaming correctly or not. Apologies for Tuesday. If you were joining us on Tuesday, I was very ill. I don't often phone in sick, but I would not have been able to do my live lesson, I'm afraid. But luckily, you're here now. So I'm just waiting for confirmation and then we'll make a start. So whilst you're waiting, get your devices ready. Make sure you're logged into Just Too Easy. And I think I will make a start. So good morning, everyone. I hope you are well. So in today's session, we're going to be doing our live lesson. It's all about Easter. So we are going to be doing some Easter animations. So I hope you've got your creativity hats on and ready. So let's have a look. First up, shout outs. Now, we have a lot of shout outs today. There are a lot of you joining us. So bear with me. I've got about 12 shout outs to do. So hopefully you're one of them. So I have got P5, Carmony Primary School. Hello. I've got P6 at Glen Craig Integrated Primary. Hello to you guys. P7 at St. Brona's Primary. P4, 5, 6 and 7 at St. Patrick's Mayor Bridge. So hello to you guys. I've got Holy Trinity Belfast. Hi to you. Mrs. McCann's P7 class at St. Mary's Newcastle. Hello and welcome. We've got P3 and 4 at St. McCartan's Clocher. I had to practice that. In fact, I had to um, I had to Google how to pronounce that. So hopefully I got that correct. <laughs> I've got Mrs. Close's P5 class at Riverdale Primary, Lisbon. And we've got Mr. Kennedy's class, so Year 4 class at Christ the Redeemer. P5, Ballyvesta, and Mr. Hutchinson's class at Hamilton's Bourne Primary. So hopefully I got all of you. Okay, let's have a look at what we are going to be doing today. So we are going to be learning how to use paint tools. So we're making a paint background. So we're editing a background and inserting images. We're then going to be saving that image and using it as a background in an animation. We might be adding text if you want to. We can record sound and save and then we can retrieve our work as well. So we've got a very busy session. Now, teachers, you may well want to deliver this in a two part session. It may be too much to do in 45 minutes for your class, in which case I would probably recommend doing the paint session and then doing the animation session at a later time if that's what you want to do. OK, so I have got two examples, two waggles. So what a good one looks like. So two examples of what you could create in your Easter animation. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to create animations. But it's entirely up to you how you create your animation and what happens in your animation. So let's have a look. So this is the first one. And you'll notice in this one that this bunny gets closer and closer and he gets bigger as he gets closer. It's called perspective. So let's have a look. So he gets closer and closer. And then he says Happy Easter in a speech bubble. So that's one example. And then this is another example. We've got our bunny moving fairly slowly. 
we can speed this up when we're playing it when it's not in view only mode and he goes to the Easter basket and then we've got happy Easter that is typed out okay so let's get started shall we so hopefully you are all logged in if you're not teachers you can pause this session at any time so if you need to pause and make sure that everyone is logged on then you can do so but we're going to delve straight into it so once you're logged in everyone we're going to find JIT who can find JIT for me that's it it's this lovely yellow tile now it might be in a different place on your launch pad but just look for the bright yellow tile that says JIT JIT and we're going to open that up now JIT always opens up in right okay and we want to use paint who can tell me what color tab is paint that's right it is the blue tab so we're going to click on the blue tab and I'll know that I'm in the right place because my screen will be blue okay so you can see blue all around the outside so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose an appropriate background. Now we want something that's linked to Easter. So the beach and iceberg probably won't be appropriate. So I would suggest you use the park background. You can also use the wood, park or path backgrounds as well if you wanted to. So I'm going to choose the park background. And to choose that, I'm just going to hover over where it says park and I'm going to click and that's going to open up my park background. So can you choose a background and then wait for the next instruction? Brilliant. OK, now we're not going to spend too long on our background and we don't want to make it too busy. Now, what I mean by that is we don't want too much on our background because it might make our animation uh, look a little bit confusing we want someone to be able to see what's happening in the animation okay so we're going to add a few things onto our background so maybe a few flowers maybe a few trees maybe even an easter basket if you want now class it's really important that we remember anything we add onto our background won't be able to move okay so don't add anything like an easter chick or a bunny because those are going to be our characters that move okay and we're going to add those in in the animation so don't add anything like that remember these need to be static items can you say static well done so static means something that doesn't move okay so static so let's have a look at what we could add into our image and we're just going to add in some clip art we're not going to draw anything because that's going to take too much time and we haven't got a lot of time today so i'm going to click where it says mini beasts it might say something else there but click where that word is and that's going to open up our clip art libraries so i'm going to choose if i use this button down here this arrow I'm going to choose the plants clip art library. So I'm going to click that and that's going to open up lots of different plants for me. OK, now I want to add just a few. Oh, I don't want to add a big poppy, do I? I want to add a few trees along that back line, along the horizon at the back. So I'm going to use this arrow here. until I find my nice big tree. There it is. OK, so when I find the object, you might want to use a different object. So when I find the object that I want to use on my background, I'm going to click it and it's going to add it into my clip art. So now when I hover over with my mouse, it will show on the page. Now, if you're using a touchscreen device like an iPad or a Chromebook that has touchscreen, you you can touch the screen and that will show you how big it is but it will be the same size as this okay now my tree probably is big enough but just to show you i can make this bigger by clicking on this plus button at the top can you see my tree is getting much bigger that's well, too big now and i can make it smaller by using this minus button so there we go 
And then when I got it the size that I'd like it, I'm just going to touch or I'm going to left click on that page to stamp that in the right place. I'm going to add two trees there. OK. Now, I don't have to, when I want to choose another object, I don't have to click on plants now because I'm in the right clip art library. So what I can do is use these left and right buttons. So what I'd like you to do is to choose a few objects, maybe some different flowers. I'm going to make them much smaller. And I want you to just stamp them on your page. And then select another object. Let's have a look. I'm going to add in a daffodil because let's face it, daffodils are a springtime flower, aren't they? And we can add a few because daffodils grow together. There we go. Let's add some over here. Add one over here and maybe one other flower. Let's go for some daisies and I'm going to stamp these around my page. OK, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to have a go. Teachers, as I said earlier, if you want to give them more time to create this, you can pause the session and just allow them that time to explore. Now, class, if you've added something by mistake or you don't like where you've put something, you've got two options. OK, if it's the thing that you've just stamped on the page and you don't like where it is, you can just use this button up here. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see this button here. That is the undo button. So if I click that, can you see that daisy disappeared? So that's one way of doing it. Now, if I don't like something that I put in earlier and I want to remove it, I've also got the option to use my eraser tool. So this is kind of like your, your rubber that you have in school when you want to rub out some pencil marks. So we can click on this and then we can just click over the object that we want to remove and that will take that away. So don't worry if you make a mistake. It's easy to get rid of it. I'm just going to have some of my tea. Now, remember, class, don't add too many items. We don't want it looking too busy. We don't want it looking like there's so many items on our page. Less is more, as the phrase goes. <laughs> right. Now, the last thing we need to add is an Easter basket. Now, this object isn't in any of our clip art libraries. OK, so we need to do something special. We need to web search for this image. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click where it says plants. And this time, instead of clicking into our clip art libraries, we're going to go to this button here. Can you see this globe at the top of this list here? This globe, this yellow globe. Now that's our web search button that allows us to search for any images that aren't in a regular clip art library. So if I click that and now I'm going to search for the word Easter basket and then I'm going to hit enter on my keypad. OK, so that button unfortunately doesn't work. You need to press the enter button. I'm just going to zoom out. So now we've got a lovely list of images that we could use. So you can choose whichever Easter basket you want to add. Now, it might not be an Easter basket. You might want to add an Easter egg instead, because we're going to have our character move across the screen to the, the Easter object. So if you want to look for an Easter egg, you can look for an Easter egg. It could be an Easter bonnet. I'm going to use Easter basket and I think I'm going to use this one here because it's nice and colourful. 
So when you find the object that you want to use, click on it and that's going to add that into our clip art here. Now that's very small, isn't it? So we need to make this much bigger and we're going to use this plus button here. So I'm going to make it about that size and I'm going to add it to one side of my screen. Because as I said, I want the character to move from one side of the screen to the other. Okay. And you're going to click where you want that basket or that egg or that bonnet or whatever it is that you've chosen to use in your, your background. Okay. Now, teachers, I am going to show students how to save their image to be able to use it as a background. So if you do want to pause the session, run to the front, <laughs> press the pause button. Brilliant. OK, so class, when I save a file, what do I need to do? Well, hopefully you said that you need to name your file because it's important for us to know which each file is in our my files okay we don't want lots and lots and lots of of just paint files that will be called paint so we're going to click in this top bar here and we're going to name that something that you know it will be so i'm going to name mine easter background you can name it whatever you want or easter picture or just Easter if you want to. And then which button do I press to save? That's right, it's this orange button here with the floppy disk. This children is a floppy disk. This is what we used to use in the olden times. <laughs> so we're gonna click this. And there you go. Now, that has saved that file so that we can carry on painting. But we need to press the special save to be able to use this in Animate. So it's really important that you follow this step. OK, so hopefully everybody has saved using the olden times floppy disk button. And then you need to press this button over here, you might not notice this. Oh, this button here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. Can you see this button on the right? It's got a little picture with an arrow coming out of it. That is the save as image button. So that's going to save that picture for us. So it is really important that you press this button. Otherwise, the next step won't work. OK. So we're going to press this button. It's going to do our funny spinny saving thing again. And once it's saved, it's taking a while for some reason. You'll know that it's saved because that save as image button, can you see it's like a ghost now? It's there, but it's not. So that tells me that I have saved that. So you need to make sure you have pressed that button, otherwise, the next step won't work. So teachers feel free to pause and just go around the room and double check that they've all saved as image. OK. Right. Are you ready to do some animation now? This is Miss Kimball's favourite thing to teach. I love animation. So who can tell me what colour tab is the animate tab? It is pink well done it's this pink one and it says animate so i'm going to click the animate tab and i'm going to know that i'm on the right page because my page will be pink that's right okay so if you have got a different colored page you're in the wrong place okay now the first thing that we need to do children is we need to add in our image that we've just created so we're not going to use one of these templates like we normally would. OK, we are going to click on this button that says pictures. Can you see this tab 
it says pictures we're going to click that and then your image that you've just created should be here now if it's not there that means you didn't save it properly okay so put your hand up if it's not there and your teacher will be able to come and help you you need to go and save as image <clears throat> okay so that's why that step was really important so when you when you find your image you're going to click on it and that is going to load that lovely image that you've just created as your background okay and there we go we are ready to start animating now the first thing we need to do children is we need to think and choose our character okay so what sorts of characters do you think we could use for an Easter animation? Call out, what do you think we could use? Okay, one, two, three, look at me. <laughs> Hopefully you said things like a chick or a bunny. Now I'm going to let your teachers decide whether some of the alternatives are allowed or not. I'm sure there are some alternatives that have been said. I'm going to choose a bunny. I will, I'll give you creative freedom to add the character that you like. Just make sure, if it's not a chick or a bunny, make sure your teacher says yes first. Okay, so I need to find my character. So I am going to click where it says animals and we're going to do the same thing that we did earlier. We're going to web search for our character because it can give us a, bit, a few more options. Who can remember which button do we press to find our web search function? Hopefully you said the glow button here. Again, I'm just going to zoom in just so you can see. We're going to click on this button here, okay, this button, this little globe. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to search for the image that I would like. So I'm going to search for an Easter bunny. So I'm going to type Easter. Now you could also type Easter chick if you wanted. But I'm going to type Easter bunny and then I'm going to use my enter button to search for that. So I use my enter button and zoom out. And there we go, we've got a few choices to choose from. So I'm gonna use my down arrow. So I quite like this fella here, I might come back to him. So I'm gonna have a little look at some more. This fella's quite cute. So I've got lots and lots of choices. So I think I'm going to go back to that one that I saw at the beginning. I'm going to go, I'm going to use this fella here. Okay. Now, if you wanted, you don't have to add Easter. You can just type bunny and see what comes up. Let's see. So we have got, oh, he's quite nice as well. Okay. I'm going to choose him. And there we go. When you find your character, you're going to click on him or her or them or they. And that will appear here. OK, so teachers, you might want to give them a little bit of time to find their perfect character that they want to use. OK. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we created that bunny that came from far away and got bigger and bigger. OK, so he looked like he came from the background and he moved forwards and got bigger. So he looked like he was getting closer. So it's perspective. OK. And how we do that is we start with our character being very, very small. So I need to make my character small. So I'm going to make him much smaller, maybe even a little bit smaller. There we go. OK. 
So we're going to make our character small. So can you just do that? Make your character small. Not too small. We don't want him absolutely tiny. Probably about that big. Okay. Okay. Now, class, I want your hands off the keyboard focusing on me because I'm just going to talk about animation. Okay, because this might be the first time that you have animated before and we need to know some phrases, some key words that we're going to be using and some key processes. So how things are going to work. Okay, so hands off your keyboard, put them on your lap if you're tempted by your keyboard and you want to keep clicking. So eyes on me. At the bottom of your screen, can you see we've got these five pictures now these are called frames can you say frames frames well done so an animation is created by having lots of of frames lots of pictures that are ever so slightly different and they are run together really quickly to make something look like it's moving OK, so our images aren't actually going to move. We're just going to make them look like they're moving. OK, so this is called stop frame animation. Can you say that? Stop frame animation. Well done. OK, so we have lots of stop frame animations that you might watch. OK, who has watched Wallace and Gromit? or Shaun the Sheep. So these are stop frame animations that are made from plasticine and the characters are just moved ever so slightly. A picture is taken, moved again, pictures taken, moved again, pictures taken. And then it's played really quickly to make it look like those characters moving. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to add our character, move it slightly, add our character, move it slightly, add our character. OK, so this can take a long time. It might be that by half past 11, we haven't done as much as we want to. So we can save this file and come back to it at a later time to carry on with your animation. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to stamp our character where we want him to start. OK, so I'm going to add my character about here you can add your character wherever you want I would recommend that you add it along the back because we're gonna make him bigger so we're gonna make him look like he's getting bigger as he comes closer to the front okay so anywhere along this back line is fine okay so that is our first frame so make sure that you've stamped your character now we're going to go to our second frame. So to do that, we're going to click here in frame number two. OK. And can you see? I've got a bunny ghost there. You see my bunny ghost? Now that is called onion skinning. Can you say onion skinning? It's a very funny phrase, isn't it? It just shows you where your character was in the last frame. So it makes it easier for you to know where to put him in the in this frame. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to make our character just one. Plus bigger. And we're going to move them slightly to the side. Can you see? So I can just see I'm just going to hover. So I've got my my mouse and I'm just going to hover close to my bunny ghost to my onion skinning and then I'm going to click now if you're using a touch screen this is going to be a little bit more difficult so you just need to try and stamp it as close to that ghost as possible okay and then you're going to do the same thing you're going to go to the next frame we've got our bunny ghost we're going to make him a little bit bigger. We're going to stamp him 
a little bit off that bunny ghost. And then we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go to frame number four. Now you don't have to make him bigger. We could just make him move a little bit. Stamp him and then go to the next frame and make him a little bit bigger. Stamp him again. And then hopefully you've all caught up. If they need time to catch up, just press the pause button, teachers. OK. Just giving your teachers time to run to the front to press pause if they need to. <laughs> then we have run out of frames. OK. Now animate is brilliant because we can add as many frames as we want. So we can make these animations really long. So to add a frame, we're going to press this green plus. The green plus is really important. That is the green plus button. OK, we're going to press that and that's going to add another frame. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make our bunny a little bit bigger. Stamp him and then press the green plus. Now we don't want to make him too much bigger, so maybe one more plus. And there we go. He looks like he's at the front now. And stamp him again. OK. Now, the same as with coding, it's really important when we're animating that we check our work and check that it looks OK and it works OK. So how do you think we're going to check our animation and check that it looks OK? What are we going to press? Which button are we going to press? Have a look at your screen and see if you can see. The play button. Well done. And the play button is down here, this green triangle. We're going to press that and that is going to play our animation. Can you see my bunny looks like he's getting closer and closer? OK. And then we're going to press the stop button and that's going to bring us back to be able to carry on editing. OK, now I'm going to add another frame. I just want my bunny to be a bit closer. So I'm going to add another frame by pressing my green plus button. Can you see I've added another frame and I'm going to just make my bunny come a bit closer to the front to this basket here and maybe another one. So I'm going to press that green plus again. And there we go. And I can check my animation again so I can press pl play. OK, and press stop. Now, this can be a little bit fiddly. OK. And I have teachers, I have asked for this to be changed, so hopefully this will change. At some point. Can you see at the bottom of our screen, there's a grey scroller button so that allows us to see that last frame. OK, so we need to drag that to the end. OK. Hopefully, as I said, teachers, that hopefully will change soon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in. I'm going to show you two ways to do something. I'm going to show you the easy way first. I'm going to show you the speech bubbles. And then teachers, you might want to stop the session at that point. OK, because that is the easier version. So that would certainly be suitable for your younger classes that are joining us. If you wanted to challenge your students a little more, I will then show how to add in that text that just appears. OK. So I'm going to show you the two different ways. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add in my speech bubble. OK, 
So I've got my bunny and my speech bubbles, zoom out, there we go. My speech bubbles are in my clip art library. So I'm going to click that word bar there. And the speech bubbles are just there. Can you see speech bubbles? OK, so I'm going to click on speech bubbles and I've got lots of choices for shapes. Now, what I would suggest you do is just to make this a little bit bigger to start with. We can see how big that is and then choose your shape. So there's lots of shapes to choose from. I'm just going to show you. We've got square ones, we've got some pow ones, we've got some curvy ones, we've got some thought bubbles. So you might want your Easter Bunny thinking something. And we've even got some nice colourful ones. We've got a nice yellow one there, but I am going to stick with, I think I might go with this one here, this square one. Okay. So once you've chosen your speech bubble, shape. You are then going to click. Can you see there's a text bar underneath? I'm going to click in that text bar and I'm going to write what I want to be in my speech bubble. So I'm going to write happy Easter. You can write whatever you want in there. So just remember it's an Easter animation. So probably link it to Easter for some description. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time just to write something into your speech bubble. And there we go. OK. And then I'm going to hover over and I'm going to add my speech bubble wherever I want it to be. Now, just remember the curvy bit of my speech bubble the sort of the pointed end is supposed to be close to the character's mouth if we're being picky. OK, so then you're just going to click on your page where you want to add in your speech bubble. Now, again, students, if you've added that in the wrong place, you've got your undo button. And you can also use the eraser button as well. OK. So stamp it on your page. Now I'm going to check how that looks. So what am I going to press? My play button. Well done. So I'm going to have my bunny coming forwards. Oh, that speech bubble was very quick, wasn't it? Barely had time to read it. So I'm going to show you how we can make that speech bubble last a little bit longer. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use the copy frame button. OK, so this is different from the add frame button. So the add frame button is our green plus. We're not going to press that. OK, we've already looked at using that. We're going to add the copy frame button, we're going to press this button. Can you see it's this red plus button? So that is going to copy everything that I have added onto that frame into the next frame. So if you press that, that now, if you can see in my frames, I've got a little sort of preview here. I'm going to zoom in. I've got my Easter bunny with my speech bubble in two frames now. And I might add it, I might click that copy button another couple of times. So I want it to be on the screen for a, a little while, long enough for the person that is watching the animation to be able to read what is in the speech bubble. So just remember, the more text or the more words that are in that speech bubble, the longer you need that to be on the screen. OK, so I would recommend three or four frames being copied. So remember to get to that last frame, you have to use that grey scroller button, which can be a bit fiddly. I'm sorry. OK, so you've got that grey scroller at the bottom. And then we're going to press that red plus button again. 
and use my scroller. So there we go. I've got four copies of that same frame. So let's see how that looks different to the, to the animation that we just watched where it was a very quick speech bubble. So let's have a look how it, whether it looks any better. So is that giving me time to read that speech bubble? Yes, it has. Well done. OK, I'm going to press stop. So teachers, as I said, that is the simple version for adding text. So if your students have found that challenging enough, feel free to stop this um, and carry on perfecting your animation as you wish. If they did want to make that um, character move again, you could then press that plus button and then add in some more frames with your bunny sort of moving off the screen if you wanted to. But I'm now going to showcase how we can add in some text that just appears. OK, so to do that, I am going to press the plus button, the green plus button this time. OK, so I've got my ghost bunny and my ghost speech bubble now. So now what I need to do is I need to stamp my bunny in again. OK, so I'm going to find my bunny. Now this time my bunny, I don't have to search for it again. It should be in my stamps. Now, probably because I've used this before, it will be. There we go. So it should be the first stamp in your my stamps. I'm going to show you that again. So if you go to my stamps, your bunny or your character should show there as one as that first stamp. Now I used mine a few days ago, so it will be further down. So it's going to be here. And there we go. Now I can see using my ghost bunny, my onion skinning, that my bunny is far too big. So I need to make him smaller so that he's the same size as he was before. Probably one more. And there we go. OK. Now, if you wanted to, you could face him the other way so that he looks like he's turning around. So to do that, we can use this button here. Again, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. You see this, this arrow with two, two arrowheads on it. I'm going to click that. And that has flipped my bunny the other way. So I could make him look like he's looking to the side. And then I'm going to stamp that. OK. Now, I'm going to show you the first two letters of my Happy Easter. Because this process does take a little bit of time. And then you can carry on that process at a later time. I'm just conscious that we are running out of session time. So to add in some text, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my stamp frame button again. So my red plus. OK, so I'm going to click my red plus once and that has added my bunny again to that next page, that next frame. OK, and then we're going to find some text. So the text again, we're going to open up our clip art libraries. And we've got this clip art library that says A, B, C. A, B, C. So we're going to click that. And you have, I don't know why it's being so slow. There we go. Three different fonts to choose from. So you can choose whichever one you like. I personally like this one because it's quite big and chunky and you can see it quite nicely. So when you find the font that you like, you're going to click on that. And that's going to add that in there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this text bigger. And just check. There we go. That's probably big enough. OK. And then we're just going to write the first letter of our first word. OK, so I'm going to write Happy Easter. If you want to write something different, you can write that. Maybe you're using a different language. We might have some Irish schools joining us. So if you want to use Irish, you can. OK, I'm going to use the first letter, which is 
for happy Easter. So as soon as I type that has added that in there, can you see? Now we can change the colour of our text. So you might want to choose a different colour, so maybe orange or yellow. Yellow is quite nice. But once we've changed the colour, we then need to click back on the letter here to select that as a, as a stamp. So if we click on the there we go. Now we can stamp that on our. So if you do change the colour, remember you need to click back on that letter to be able to stamp it. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to stamp that on our page. So click. There we go. And then we're going to add, we're going to copy that frame. So to copy the frame, we're going to press that red button. And I would recommend that you copy that frame twice. OK. So we've got, we can click on each frame and double check. We've got her, her, her. OK. Then we're going to add the next letter. So we're going to delete this one out and then we're going to add a. Ah. And then we're going to stamp that very close to that first letter. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy that frame one, two times. And then you're going to do that whole process again. You're going to change this letter to a P. Stamp that next to the first two letters. Then press the red plus two times. And then you can do it again. Now, we're quite lucky with this one because it's a double P in happy. So we don't need to change the text. But then we need to press that red plus two times again. OK. And I may as well finish up my word. And there we go. Happy. And then my red plus two times. And then obviously you would start Easter. You would leave a gap or add it onto the next line. Right. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to play our animation and then I'm going to show you how to save it and then we are finished for today's session. So I have overrun a little bit. I do apologize. So we're going to press play. We're going to double check what our animation looks like. And there's our text that appears. OK, now just to highlight to you, you can make your animation faster. So right at the bottom of your page, there is a scroller with some um, arrows. So this will make your animation faster or slower. Don't make it too fast because you will ruin um, the enjoyment factor of somebody watching that back. And the other thing you can do, this curly arrow, that will make the animation just rerun again and again. So if you just want to play it one time, you can you change it to this arrow and that will just play that once. Can you see that's a bit quicker now? And it will stop when it gets to the end. OK, so that's all those settings at the bottom. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to name our file and save it. So we're going to click at the top where it says animate and let's have Easter animation or whatever you want to call it. And then you want to click save. So remember the olden times floppy disk. The orange button. Now, depending on how big your animation is, the more frames you have in your animation, the longer that saving process will take. Teachers as well, you need to be conscious of your Wi-Fi speed. So that may well, you might want to do it in batches uh, with students pressing save uh, just in case your Wi-Fi explodes. Not explodes, but, you know, gets over overwhelmed. <laughs> and then when your save button has greyed out, you are all done. And remember, your animation will be ready to look at and play in your my file so just to show you i'm going to go to my launch pad 
we will find our animation in our my files and we can view our animation in view only mode so just to show you how to activate that if you hover over your east animation we're going to go to that green circle and you'll have this open in view mode so if we click that we've now got this lovely frame where we can see our animation and we don't have all of our editing tools along the left and at the bottom so there you go okay and teachers remember this is the mode that parents will be able to see if they are using the parent portal so hopefully class you have enjoyed our animation session teachers i'm sorry i've run over a little bit hopefully you've enjoyed it too and learned some some skills um, so we hope to see you for another anim well another live lesson soon i will be uh, planning next term sessions and we will be um, advertising them in all the usual places um, so we hope that you have a lovely Thursday and we hope that you have a lovely Easter so enjoy your break and we will see you all again soon okay thanks class